How's it going? Pretty good. How's it going? Amazing. I'm having the time of my life. They're going to have to kick me out of here. Am I here? I mean, San Diego. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah. How are you doing? You look very fresh uh, for someone who may or may not have been up quite early. Um, we only got three hours of sleep last night, two hours the night before. Sleep is for the week. Yeah, exactly. We don't need sleep. We, we don't need sleep. Like <laughs> really sore. Yes, yes. <laughs> but that's okay. Just get the insoles for Plexicon. Okay, okay, insoles good. or slippers. Okay, yeah, I'm going full slipper. I'm going yeah. full slipper and Plexicon. I'm just going to be in the pool the whole time. I'm doing my panel from the pool. I got the whole thing. <laughs> Hello. So season two, you're just like shocking us all every episode. Constantly. Any other little tidbits for the people who haven't seen everything? Well, uh, I just said, I, yeah, some of us who have, set, have seen some stuff. Um, yeah, it's all cliffhanger endings from here on out. So, uh, yeah, last night was even a soft landing, and that was the reveal of uh, Waverly telling Winona she may not be a nerd. I love that stuff, you know, I was really influenced by Lost, I think like, I just think it's really fun, we have so much pleasure with our fandom, live tweeting together, it's very interactive, I like the yells and the screams, I think it's unusual to have an entertainment experience like that now for this younger generation, I'm only 22. I'm um, only 21! Oh yeah, oh you. Um, but really, right, that's what makes it fun, I think like, it's a comic book, it comes from a comic book, I want it to feel like a comic book, where you can't wait to get to the next panel. And then when you get to the end, you can't wait to rush out by the next uh, issue. So, um, you know, as long as it's earned, yes. I, uh, oof, we used up a lot of story this year. It's going to be fun. What are you thinking in terms of how to move forward with a child? Like a child, a stable child, a demon child, right. or a time down? I'm thinking a lot of things. I'm thinking that as crazy a genre show as our genre show is, we take a lot of pride in keeping the characters grounded and making their decisions consistent with who they are as characters. I also think the reality is um, it's an incredibly dangerous situation for a child. I think also we've encountered a lot of demons, so whether it's a human baby is up for grabs. I just want all the decisions made for to make everybody feel something. So I'm going to say about that. Why did you decide to go with the pregnancy storyline instead of you know what? We honestly considered all options. We truly did. But when we did, we, when we did the math, like Melanie Scrofano for I think four days after our last day of shooting. If you want to know what a real life superhero looks like, that's your answer. So when you really look at it, like even if you look like Melanie, nine months is nine months. And I, this is not a sitcom. I didn't want her carrying in, like, like increasingly large loads of laundry when the demons invade the home. I wanted her kicking some demons. Bananas, and she wanted that too. I really wanted the audience to know the show was still going to be the same. She still had a job to do. And I also felt like maybe that story had it before a pregnant superhero. And I mean, I know Gal Gadot was pregnant, but not on screen. Um, and sci-fi got really excited about that. Like, honestly, they could not have been more conscious about it. I just think my known as a character who doesn't always get a lot of choices, so this seemed in line, too, with her destiny. Destiny is constantly trying to screw over and make choices for her, but every day my known gets up and tries to fight again and make her own choices. So we actually felt we could do the story we had set out with her pregnant, which was really interesting. We didn't have to change that much. Yeah. Really Always. Mythology is the hard part, right? Like, because you want to be able to tell it without it being exposition or you drowning in it. Same with backstory. Like, how do you tell mythology or backstory, but using the characters everyone has shown up to kind of see? Um, everything comes back to the herb curse, that's what I'll say. We know the rules of the curse, and, you know, early on I did lay out a lot of the story of the herb curse, so I feel like we have enough to kind of personal it out for years. But certainly when you talk to Bo, the tradition of the comic book is they encountered all sorts of mythology. They fought mummies, and, like, there's an amazing Aztec warrior princess character called Valdez in the comic who's, like, this badass. So I feel like our show certainly could support that. Um, but you know, it is a Western, and I'm interested in that kind of, what I would say. So, 
North American mythology. Yeah. So you weren't here for the silly question last year. If you had to throw cold spaghetti at any one cast member, who would you throw it at? Like if, just for fun. And then oh, which for song? Fun, Melody, just because, or Tim, because he'd be so wounded. I'll throw it at all of them. Is it cooked spaghetti? Yes. Is the spaghetti sauce? Yes. Is it going to ruin something nice they're wearing? Possibly. Is it their wedding day? <laughs> <laughs> did, their dog, did their dog just die? These are the writing room questions. Exactly. I need to know. I can't just commit. And then if you had to do karaoke like with any of the cast like characters, right. what song would you sing with them? Character or cast? Both. Not Dominique, because she can sing too good and I'd be like, I'm just going to sit over here and beatbox. Um, you know what? Maybe Shamir, because he's such a fun DJ and such a great dancer and has quite a presence. Maybe him. I want to take everybody. Nice. On Lost Girls, the blood triangle was very dominant to a lot of seasons. Are we heading in that direction with Donald and Josh? And I know or are you concerned about maybe changing that up? I just don't want it to be a traditional love triangle. I think it was instrumental with Lost Girl and like that was great. I think I'm done that story before, so I'm a little more interested in things that are complicated. I really like that these characters, although they're complete fuck ups, are grown ups. Do you know what I mean? I think they all like each other, which makes it a little bit less of a straight line. I think they're not all straight, speaking of straight lines. Um, so, no, I don't think it's a traditional love triangle. At all. And I'm not that interested in shipping wars you with know, the boys. I just feel it's been done. So you can ship whoever you want. <laughs> that's fine. But and you can ship the boys together. That's fine. Right. That's um, we've been loving else. all the bromance with the boys. Oh, I like know, even Doc right? and Dolls, they're there for each other. But that almost makes it more heartbreaking too, because it they is. don't hate each other now. Yeah. And it's almost more difficult. So it is. it's like I like eggs or something. Yeah. So how's it been with all the new cast members and Amazing. creating new characters? What was your favorite moment to write for them? Like, um, I love all of them. Yeah. I think the, my, one of my favorite things that happened, she's not at the con, but Danny Kind, who plays Mercedes, yes. was really fun because such a trooper. Because the truth is, don't tell anyone I said this, but I didn't totally know where we were going with her character with the widows. I kind of did, but she, kept, she signed up to play uh, one character, and then she's like, Okay, so what now? I'm in like Victorian garb and my face has been stolen and I was like, just go with it, just go with it. So just her commitment every episode to kind of embracing it and getting to play something so different than what she thought she was going to play was really joyous. Um, but also falling in love with uh, Tamara and Varun. Like, oh, yeah. I think we had different fates for them in mind, but just seeing what they could do and seeing their chemistry with certain cast members, I really like tweaking it. You know, they always say you really have to have a plan or you'll die, but you need to see what you're getting, too. You can't be immune to the fact that, like, this couple you wanted to pair up don't have any chemistry. You have to be brave and be like, that's not going to work. We need to do this. So I love seeing it evolve. And they just fit right in. I I, I quite honestly, we have such. I know we're such a love and it is so boring, but we really do love each other on set. So we have a no jerks rule with my casting director. Like I'm honestly like, bring bring me a B plus actor versus an A plus actor who's a jerk. So and I think you got those A plus. I think so. Yeah. Oh, it's all gonna go downhill if we get another season. He goes through the roof. <laughs> I don't know. Just keep yelling at them. Hopefully I know. Not. I feel like there's gonna be an army of herpers who just, just so show you can up. Shoot in the middle of winter. Oh my god. And just so I can have one moment of, uh, uh, you know, happiness and then panic again. We'll Bye see you later. Have a good day.